Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and I wanted to talk about um, planning and uh, basically pacing the curriculum. So this isn't going to be about which ones we're planning, but it is going to be like once you've selected your curriculum, how we are going about to pace ourselves through the year so that we finish with what we wanted to finish on time. Um, now, for some people, time might not matter. There might not be some clear cutoffs. We are part of a homeschool charter, which does have grades due at certain um, periods. And also we have to renew and re-register each year. And um, it comes with a money allotment and um, that gets divvied up and calculated each year to um, at a certain time. So for us, we do kind of need to figure out what we're going to finish by the end of the year so that we know what kinds of things we're going to need to purchase um, and use our allotment for for the next year. So that's why I'm doing it also because um, we're not entirely sure if we're going to be homeschooling next year. We're looking at it. Um, I, my child has asked to homeschool next year. I would love to homeschool next year. My home, um, my work has said that um, they do not want everybody coming back to the office once we are able to, that they do want people to be working from home. Uh, so hopefully that all lines up, but right now, in case it doesn't, we kind of want to get through some certain things by the end of May to make sure that we have covered what we wanted to cover this year. So with that, I have gone through a few different ways of sort of planning the weekly curriculum. Um, this is what I'm using now. And honestly, I some of these things on the side, I've also already marked off because we've moved through them. Um, but uh, there are some things that we want to accomplish daily. So we have moving beyond the page language arts curriculum and their science slash social studies. It, it alternates with the units. Um, so we want to do those daily. Um, and we want to do math and Spanish each day. Now, math and Spanish are on the computer, they're online. Um, my learner can do those independently. Neither of them take very long together. They take maybe 30 minutes of independent work. So those are fine. We do those Monday through Friday. Um, the language arts and the social studies science, we do that three days a week because those are the days that I have available to do homeschool. And then um, and that's what we get a chance to focus on. But we cover probably in that curriculum um, two to three days worth in one of those days. So that's all we basically do on those days um, besides our morning work is language arts and then social studies or science. Um, so I had these divided up as like daily and then as much as possible and then weekly. So the as much as possible, um, those are things that are sort of in our morning work. But if for some reason we need to skip morning work or we need to move the schedule around a little bit, um, things like that when I have earlier meetings and we have to cut our school time short, um, those are the things that we could drop. Um, that included the Word Roots book, which we have now shif shifted over to Editor-in-Chief. So again, it's just a, a grammar worksheet, couple of grammar worksheets that we do. Um, cursive practice, which um, previously was working on the cursive letters, and now we have incorporated cursive into answering the question of the day, which is one of the flashcards that we do. So we have um, uh, five different sets of flashcards. One of them is a question of the day. And so now my child is writing out their answer in cursive instead of just answering the question out loud. Um, and then at the bottom, we have weekly. So these are things that we want to make sure we get to at least once a week. Um, that is art, the geography and culture, and science. And all of those are from the Blossom and Root curriculum that we're using. We started using their language arts curriculum until our um, Moving Beyond the Page 
curriculum arrived and there are a couple of units that I have flagged for us to be able to um, go back to if we have the chance, but it's not necessarily something that we have to get to because we do have a language arts curriculum. Um, and then the other weekly thing is one of our subscriptions. So we have subscriptions to Sankofa Club, which is on Black History, um, Atlas Crate, which is a different kit for a different country and comes once a month. And then we have the Highlights uh, Top Secret Adventures, which is, um, it comes with a book and an activity booklet about um, an, a country as well. So we want to hit those again weekly. Um, so that being said, this is what I've been using basically for the last semester. Um, and then each of these columns going down is going to be um, what we're actually doing for that week. So for example, um, this was when we uh, came back in January. Um, the uh, language arts and the science social studies um, it's, uh, now I can't remember what the C, <laughs> um, concept, there you go, concept three, unit one, um, and then when we need to switch those, we usually spend about a month or so on those, um, and then for math um, and Spanish, if we had anything extra that we wanted to do or instead of, so when we started back in January, we were working on times tables and memorizing the times tables for multiplication, um, just saying them out loud and being able to answer them. We've also done flashcards for multiplication and flashcards for division. And those are things that we might do either instead of math online or in addition to the math online. And then Spanish, same thing, if there's something in particular um, that we wanted to do in addition or um, or in place of the online, then that's where I would write that down. Um, oh, I also have on as much as possible the United States. Um, we did state flashcards in the first semester. We then learned over winter break, we learned the 50 states that rhyme song. Um, and now we are working on labeling the states on a map of the US. And so we had a book draw the US states that we have now at this point worked all the way through. Um, and then also have some blank maps that we are revisiting um, and uh, having the learner write which state goes where with the idea that hopefully um, by the end of the year we'll be able to place all the states in the right spot is the goal. Um, and then at the bottom, we also have like wonder. Um, so wonder 17 and 18. So we wanted to cover two of them. Um, wonder 17 here, wonder eight, and nine here. And then we're going to do an atlas crate, that sort of thing. So we just wrote out which ones we're going to do. Um, some of them I uh, combined together, especially with the art and the geography. Some of those fit well. Um, they were shorter lessons and they could be combined together. Um, we actually have finished the geography portion of um, Blossom and Root and we are very close to finishing the art uh, curriculum, but we still have ways to go with science, but we doubled up on some of those science lessons to make sure that we can get through the end, which sort of brings me to the pacing. How do we pace it out? Um, for some things like uh, the math, which is online, I looked to see how many lessons there are and how many days we have left and just math it out to make sure that we have enough time to get through those and how much wiggle room we might have. So if we know we're going to, I'm aiming to just finish early with some of these things. So by May, maybe we're only doing a couple of um, lessons still and we just aren't having to do as much um, as opposed to just jumping straight into the next thing. We are going to take um, a bit of a summer break from 
more traditional academics and we're going to do things that are not going to look too much like school so uh, for us there will be a shift there um for the science with blossom and root we actually did an additional unit on dinosaurs in the fall so we started the third grade curriculum and then we did the additional dinosaurs unit and then we're going back to the third grade curriculum so we have a lot more content than we had weeks um even if we had done one um follow their pacing and done like one a week or whatever. Um, so instead, I went through and I looked, okay, what do we want to cover all these things? Are there any things that we want to skip? Um, I did feel like we wanted to cover all of them. The ending of this curriculum talks a lot about the environment and ecology and how everything is connected. And I felt like that was really important and would be really good for spring. So we're going to spend time on that. So in order to get there, we doubled up with a lot of the animals as we worked through um, those sections, um, which also I think went okay. Um, my learner it was super into the dinosaurs. So we did a lot of stuff with the dinosaurs, not as much into the animals um, in particular, but we still want to kind of connect everything and, and build up um, how everything is interconnected. So we have that, um, but we're combining some things. So like there were um, bony fish and boneless fish, right? Well, we did both of those at the same time. You know, we'll learn about both of them. Um, now we're getting to the point where the rest of the science will be one wonder, one topic a week. And that we will be able to go into it in a little bit more detail um, because we want to be able to go into more detail. Um, same thing with like the art, the art, some of them just really fit together pretty well. It didn't make sense for our child to spread them out. Um, there were some concepts that, um, you know, it went well together. So like warm colors and cool colors, those were two separate lessons, but we combined them into one. That way we could also talk about the, um, contrast and the differences between those. So things like that. Um, that being said, we have gotten to the point where we are almost done with the art. We have finished the geography. Um, so we are just doing more of our subscription stuff. So you'll see here, now we're doing the Atlas crate and Sankofa. So we're doing Sankofa every week. And then we're doing like an Atlas crate or the top secret um, every other week. Um, when we finish art, we'll probably just continue to do the same thing where we can just add more of that subscription stuff. Um, I also have um, little activity packets for each of the 50 US states. So we could add that in as sort of our geography piece if we found that we had um, the need for it. But I also wanna make sure that we have enough time to go more in depth on the science. Um, so that's kind of how we paced out the blossom and root. With moving beyond the page, I found that that one is a little bit more difficult for me still to plan too far ahead. Instead, what I do is I look at um, each little um, bound, you know, unit or concept and unit. Um, and I'm pulling the ones that we want to cover. We didn't get the uh, materials until halfway through the fall. And so we did not start with those until probably mid-November. So there's no way that we're going to finish everything by the end of May. Um, but what we are doing is we're sort of hitting some of the main concepts. And then we're just not necessarily doing every unit that's in there. So um, the ones that I have, there are four concepts and um three or four units each i think there's four units each and that's for both language arts and then it has an accompanying science or social studies that goes with it um 
since we're about to move into with our blossom and root science, the environment stuff, I'm going to jump over to the language arts and science that covers like rainforests and things like that. So that those will really align. And then um, when we've been working on a lot of culture stuff. So right now we are finishing up the um, concept and units that cover some of the culture and connected communities. And they're not matching up exactly, um, but I'm picking ones that make sense for us that highlight the um, topics that we want to make sure that we're covering and that are teaching the concepts that we want to make sure are covered. Um, so that one I've kind of only planned out probably like a unit at a time. And then like today, so last week we finished one of the language arts units, but we still have um, this week basically left for the social studies that matches up with that. So what we're probably going to do is not start another language arts unit and finish up the social studies and then start both of the new ones next week together. And in the meantime, we can supplement with some more of our subscription stuff or we can spend more time on the social studies um, that we're currently working on. Um, one thing, though, that I have looked at, if we are able to continue to homeschool, the uh, Moving Beyond the Page curriculum is designed for ages seven to nine. My learner is eight, so they will be nine for the next year, which means that it would still probably be appropriate. And so we are still going to pull from some of those and can use those the next year without having to order additional curriculum. So for us, that will work out just fine. And um, if uh, someone was on a budget, that also might work out well, that if they have a lot of other things that they're supplementing or they're just not moving through them as fast, that they have sort of like a, a two-year window when they are appropriate. So you could continue to use them and spread it out a little bit longer. So anyway, that is how I have done the pacing, how we are trying to wrap things up and time things so that they wrap up at the end of May for our school year. And then we will shift to our summer plans, which are going to be not as structured school like. Um, and then in August, we will shift back into more of an official formal school type structure. So anyway, let me know what strategies you have found for pacing, and thanks for watching. Bye.